Hi, welcome to Just Stuff. Now recently I was playing around with a little application which I'll talk a little bit more about just now and you'll see in a future video for Just Stuff. Before we get into the code though, I wanna ask you a huge favor. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you are coming back, it means you like it. If you are subscribed, always hit the like button. For every video, please hit the like button. Uh, if you have comment and suggestion, I do welcome them. Even the one that said that the video was too long, I think that as a positive comment, I really strive to make them shorter. But you know me, I talk a lot and I do sort of evolve things slowly so that they end up being sort of long. And basically, today's video is going to be about data visualization in Go, how to tap charts and graphs and stuff like that. And there's a package called Go Chart that I'm going to use. And so what really got me to write the program right now that I'm going to show you is while I was playing around with some data analysis other stuff, I also happened to stumble upon this website called Awesome Go a few months ago. And I was going through, just browsing through all the available package they have in these different sections just to see what's available. And one section that caught my interest was financial. And I saw this Go Finance package. Let me play around with it a little bit and see what's about. All right, so that got me thinking, once the economy turned down, at least here in the United States, the stock market and stuff, hey, hey, I could write an application that pull financial, um, the stock market data, and show me how stocks that I might be interested in are moving up and down and so on. And possibly, can I do something like, can it tell me when to buy a stock or um, sell it? Now, because the economy is sort of, you know, in a downturn, I'm mostly interested in what should I buy if I have the money, right? So more about this application that I'm going to call my Go Financial application. So once I start playing around with Go Finance package and trying to get stock information and stuff, I need to visualize it. And so in addition to visualizing the stock data and been playing with uh, machine learning data, well, that's where I ended up looking at package to doing data visualization. And this is the first one we're gonna look at. So let's take a look at the code. So here I am at my um, command line and I created a directory for just go stuff. And then I have this directory called go stuff go chart, which is episode four. So let's do um, start up a Visual Studio code. And as usual, you know me, I like starting with like an example one. And so let's get a main that go going. And then um, we're going to pretend that we want to chart, so create a chart of some data. And the data is going to look like this. We have some X value and some Y, value, y values. So this is pretty straightforward. We have X values. That's um, X values is a slice of float. And the first value there is zero, one, two, three. And this just represents um, the value on the X axis. And then our Y value is some sort of computation or random value. And so now that we have our values for X and Y to plot like a simple line chart, actually, um, now we can start looking at how do we use Go chart to do this? And so if you import Go chart, so do import. And what this does, is notice the name of this package. Usually with Go, you would use the last word in the package name in the input path as your package name. So, um, but that's not the case here. Go-chart is not going to be your package name. It's gonna be sort of weird and confusing as to are you doing a operation on the package name? So what this does is this um, exports, um, exposes uh, or export a package name called chart, right? Now, I personally don't like that how um, the package is called like this, is imported with this name, but then what it exposes is chart. So I rename this to make it clear because if I'm using this in code, like, you know, when I say chart that, um, you can see it's pulling up all the stuff from that um, that package, but nowhere does it look like if I imported something called chart. So I rather give it the name um, chart. So I'll overwrite the name and I just like that because it's clear to me what's going on here. Ah, I can't save it right now. So now that we have that imported, 
the first thing we do is to create a chart where we have to say chart that chart and this is a struct that describes a chart and so we should save it somewhere let's call it graph so now we have a graph variable and we have a chart a chart has many properties like things like title and so on but most importantly we need to be able to specify how this chart should plot our data that we have here and the way um, go chart does this it has a property called series and so series is a slice of series and um, essentially what it is is a series is a slice of chart that series okay and it's basically anything that satisfy the series interface um, I encourage you to go back to the documentation, look at the chart structure and um, the series interface. But it's just an interface that tells you how to get X value, get Y value, and so on. And so for a series, there are several implementation of a series, the series interface already in this um, package. And one of them is called chart.continuous. So to represent continuous data. So if you, you type series, you would see it all. There's concat series, continuous, and histogram, linear regression, and a whole bunch of other ones. And so time series, the one we're interested in, for example, is continuous, continuous series. And this is also a struct, right? It's just a struct that implements, it's a struct value that has method to implement the series interface. So we don't really care about the methods, it's already there. All we care about creating this value, this continuous series value. And for this, it requires and the x values which we know is going to be our x value and then the y value so y value and we have y values and that's it that's all we need well of course since we put everything on a separate line we have to do this but once we do that now we have a chart that is properly initialized with a series now remember this is a slice right now we only have one series in there and so we can add many more series you can imagine and we'll do that in exercise four so how do you now turn this representation or this abstraction of a chart into something tangible that you can well semi-tangible we're in a computer of course and so the way you do that is you simply say graph which is what we have and you call the render function and um, the help popped up there a second ago. So let me do that, that render. And it tells you that the render draws the series. Render renders the chart with the given renderer to the given IO writer. So there's only two parameters you need to pass to this function, which is the chart renderer. And you don't have to write a render, there's several, well actually only two, and then where to write that data. So the renderer chart that PNG is one of one renderer and SVG. Those are the two renderers that are available. And so it just basically allow you to create charts in, with those formats. And so we just need the function pass the function name here to um, as the renderer. And this graph is going to be sure to call that with the appropriate data to you know get the result that it needs so whatever is returned by this function so now it can write it to our writer an io writer so for us the simplest io writer is os that's std out that's an io writer so we can simply do this and um, we should be able to um, render a graph now one of the things you might want to do is check to see if um, we have an error and the render function returns an error value just in case for whatever reason it couldn't render that graph and so we can do that and then we can print out the error like that okay so that's enough for us to render a png image of our chart to the screen so let's run it now um i have to hurry up here because I'm told that I take too long, my videos are too long. So 
run exercise one and then main. And you should see a bunch of garbage on the screen. That's okay. If this messes up your screen, just type reset if you're on a Unix or a Mac type computer. Um, the other thing I can do is because I use iTorm 2 and I've installed uh, this shell integration. Uh, I can't remember shell integration. I can't remember where that is. iTorm 2 shell integration. This guy. Because I've installed that, I have something called image cat and I can pipe my thing to it and you can see that this plots my um, graph here in the console. Now, since we're talking about IO, um, IO Writer, we know that what we can do is simply just create a file and have that and write the result to that file. So let's do that instead. So here, um, what we did is we have a variable called output.png and I'm just gonna say OS that create file and we shouldn't have any error, but oh well. And then I'm gonna default close in that file if we successfully open it. Of course, if we can open it, we end our program. And then here, instead of doing this, I will simply say F. And um, because ERR is not a new variable anymore, because I already have one in this my scope, well, I have to remove it from creating a new variable. And so that's all there is. And so now we can rerun this program. And the only thing I change is to write it to this file called I um, output that PNG and if I rerun it ah, well I don't need to pass it to image cat but yeah I rerun it and let's clean up and if I go back here I should see output that PNG and there it is and so I can view it inside of um, Visual Studio Code all right so let's move along really quickly um, let's paste this and call this exercise 2 and let's make sure that we close and we're working on the correct example. So in this example, um, if you look at our image, you can see that so, uh, this is pretty boring. We don't have even a title on our image. So what we want to do is add a title. But we can also do a few more things. We can, for example, make it a little bit better so that the file name is optional. So we could say file name is equals to output.png here, for example. And then we can introduce um, flags so that oh, um, we can get the file name from the user. And then, of course, if we have that, we don't need this. So I haven't changed the program much other than to introduce a flag, but this you know already. Now, in terms of um, our chart, like I said, we might want to add something like a title. And so the title, so we have series property. Now we're going to add a title property, and we can give it some um, string here that says, you know, like this is my sample chart or chart about whatever year and earnings report or something. And so this is all we need to put a title, except if we run this now. So let's go back here and let's run this example two. If we run this and we look at our output here, you'll see the same thing. We don't see our title. And that is because even though we specify a title, uh, we need to pass one other option um, property to or set another field in this chart struct to say how to display our chart. And by default, that property, the style, has a feel about whether it's visible or not. So what we need is another property here called title style. So one of the options I have is because title style is a not a struct I can say chart that style and here we go this is a struct and I have to initialize that struct with some values here you know I have to put something in here and all that stuff so I don't want to make this more complicated here in terms of um, I don't like all the in place struct value so I'll just do get title style uh -huh. and it's a function call and so i think that makes it a little bit cleaner and so now i simply have to write a function from get title that returns a chart that style and within this started chart that style object this is what i mentioned about we need to say that our, our title is actually visible show needs to be true and so Let's set that. And now if we rerun our example and then go look at it, 
we'll see there is our title indeed because our style set to show it. But there are other things that you can put in here. For example, we can say font color. For example, that drawing, and this is another package um, from that same project. And you say font the drawing, drawing color. And we can say color and you can choose red, black, blue, whatever. I'm gonna choose blue here. And then I'll say save and then rerun our example. And then I go back um, to this and you can see that's changed. So pretty straightforward here. All right, let's keep this party rocking. Um, I'm always slowing down. I can never get this stuff going quickly as I really should. But let's close this and let's work on example three. So in example three, um, what I like to do is to be able to um, have the user specify how many data points they want to have in their chart. So right now we have like this fixed set um, of data points. And so what I like to do is have a function that generates my data, but the function generates that data based on the input of how many elements or how many data points. So I could say num data points, for example, um, I don't know, num elements is probably easier. Num, num of ELEM elements equals, let's say it's 20. Now I, I just include a new flag to get that input. And then I just have to write a function that gets these values. So for example, I can do something like this. I can say, uh, let me have a function, let me call a function. That returns our value. So let's call it get data, for example. And get data is going to return two values. And here, if I get data return the value, then I won't have to worry about it there. It's all ready set. So now I can say function get data is you know return x and y, which are slices of float 64. And we can just say return because we have already to specify what our return value should be. And so how can we make this work now? Well, it's very simple. We can say X is equals to make a slice of float 64. And how, how long big should a slice be? Well, it's the number of elements that we passed in as a parameter that we have as global variable. And then once we have that, we just need to initialize this um, or x values. Now remember, this is this is the value that represents what's on the x axis. So I'm going to keep it simple and just start from zero um, and, and keep increasing, right, one after the other. So if n in this case number of elements is twenty, well we should expect x to go from zero to nineteen. And so for that, I'll just do for i um, range over x and do x of i is equals to float. 64 of i. Um, that's because each x element is a float, so I need to cast that. So that's going to take care of initializing x. We now need to initialize our y, and so we can say y is equals to make again similar thing float 64, and then number of elements has to be the same number because well we have to have each corresponding y value for each x x, x value. And then it's going to look pretty much the same um, like what we have here. So we could copy this down. And so now instead of ranging over X though, we're ranging over Y. The only difference now is that we don't, we can certainly set this and we'll have a line that just sort of go up like a diagonal line, but that is not as interesting as if we were to, let's say, let's do some random values. So let's um, initialize a random number generator. So we just need a new a random number generator, which we're gonna initialize with the current time so we can create new random value each time we run our program. And now that we have a new random value number generator, we can say random number generator that float and float 64 is gonna give us float 64 bit value. Now, the thing is this value is between zero and one. And they're going to change so very little, it might be hard to actually see on the screen. So let's scale it up by, let's say, 10. All right. 
And so um, that's one way we can increase um, the value for the range in Y. And so this should be all set now. So let's just run it. So we go up here and we do this and we run this. And then we go back here, take a look at this. And there we go. And that's our random value. And again, every single time you run this, um, you can see it changing back there um, because, well, we, we create a new random source um, generator. All right, so last example. Um, I, I don't think this library is very difficult to use, but um, there are certain things that I wish were easier. Like there are things like uh, putting tick marks and all that sort of stuff that I think should probably be a little bit automatic. Um, even when you set the title, once you set the title, it should automatically show that you shouldn't have to go set a style to say, well, oh, actually I wanted this title to be displayed. That's my opinion, of course. Um, everybody who's a developer know that how, um, you, when you write something, you have a opportunity to write it however you want and you make certain design decisions and there's probably reasons for that. So I can't criticize it too much because I haven't written one. So um, somebody took the time and write it. I'm just saying, given my preference for certain things. Um, but anyway, um, the last example here I want to show is let's say that um, we have two series. Like you can, if you remember, this is a, is a slice. So we can specify multiple series um, values here, right? So we can say, for example, we have a second series and it doesn't have to be continuous. It could be some of those other series, like a bar chart. So you can layer several types of charts on, um, on top of each other or within the same space. And so, for example, we may call this X1, for example, value. And then this might be X2, for example. And then here is, you know, one. And then this might come from data one, get data one, you know, very creative here. And so now we want the um, two, right? And so now the only thing is to write our function. Now this has to be renamed to one. And this guy, we should write a second function here called, let's call it two. I'll put the two on top. All right. And so right now we'll just have two random um, functions and we can certainly run that. Oh, but you can see I have two charts and this is, this I like, this I think is a good idea that oh, it automatically um, give each series a different color. I think some similar type of decisions should be made about showing a line, um, the vertical axis, showing the axis, sorry, showing the X and Y axis, putting some tick marks so you have some idea what the values are. So those kind of things I think make would have made this chart popped a little bit, um, but you can do it. It's just that I think it, it's just too much work just to get those basic things and rather you should be able to turn those things off. Um, most people would want to see what the range is on the X, Y axis and what the range on the Y axis. And so those should be default. All right, so one last thing, we can cho choose a slightly different um, function here. And for this, I'm actually going to use, you know, mat that sign to do like a sine wave. And I'll just simply say X stuff I, all right? And then um, if I save that, it should import the mat package. Um, and then, which it does, and then um, because that is gonna be, that's gonna, it's not going to look too good with just 20 values. So maybe we crank this up to like 200 and let's save and let's rerun this again. And then if I look at the output here, um, you can see that we do have a sine wave, which is in this blue now. Um, it's not very sharp and distinct sine wave. And um, even though this says continuous, well, we're actually sort of using um, pretty discrete values. And so, um, we'll have to find another way to make a more smooth sine wave, but at least we see um, the basic of a sine wave and then we have our green random function in the back there. So that's how you put multiple charts um, on multiple graph on the same chart. All right, that's all there is. And I hope you find that information very useful. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you another chart in library that I actually like a lot. It comes with a lot of the default that I talk about and i'll show you that next um until then take care have a great rest of the day and stay safe bye